Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Um, I'm a few minutes early because I have a lot to show you. Well, not a lot, but some really cool stuff. First thing I wanted to show you is I got the Spinifex 14M in both high shank and low shank. And there are five different rulers in here in different sizes. See the pretty designs you can make? Depending on the amount of the size ruler and the amount of rotations that you do, you can even double up. Um, for instance, you can start this one and add another shoot off and just keep on going. Bigger sizes and all the way around rotation. Aren't they cool? Yes, this one's already in my stash. What can I say? I love rulers. I have so much fun with them. So the other exciting news that I wanted to tell you and show you is I got the first suspension system in for quilting. So this is what it looks like. It's got these bungee cords here with these clamps that will just hold your quilt in the back here. You know, you're gonna set it behind your machine. It's got this clamp right here that you clamp onto your table and this clamps onto your quilt in two spots. Now they're going to come in purple, which is mine, but I do have one more purple and one more uh, blue one coming in probably today. I'll let you know once they're in. Um, basically what this does is gravity is not your friend when you're quilting something big. Okay. So it's going to clamp onto the table like this behind your machine and it's going to be holding your quilt up now the quilt is not going to be this high but it'll probably be about oh maybe this because i've got this sitting on top of the table instead of clamped to the table so it'll probably be about about that far down but even a couple of inches off of your table that a little bit of lift will really help lighten your quilt um and it makes quilting much, much easier. So when they come in, um, probably today, maybe tomorrow morning, we'll see how things go. I'll do a video, I'll set my machine up real quick and do a video of what it's like quilting something big with the suspension system. Um, it really is a lot of help. Okay, the other thing that we had come in yesterday is five bolts of batiks. All right, we have another Paisley. Now this one here is a cream background and it's got every color of the rainbow from red, pink, all the way up to purple, teals, yellows, oranges, blues, and every color in between. It's really, really pretty. It's colorful without being too bright or too much, I think. Um, I like it. Again, it's a paisley. What can I say? I like paisleys and swirls and dots. The other one is a swirl. Now this one has some blue in the background. It's got some greenish mint teal and the swirls come in all different colors on this one. From a pale swirl to a deep blue swirl and every color in between. Aren't they pretty? Next, we got some more Christmas batiks. So we've got this light blue snowflake. So it's white on light blue. And it has a little bit of gray in the background and even touches of dark blue. And all of these snowflakes are the same snowflake and they're the same size. They're very, very consistent. Isn't that pretty? These, by the way, are all from Island Batiks. Here is another snowflake. This is a, a brighter blue, and these are considered large snowflakes. So this is kind of a darker blue slash gray on this blue background. And you've got at least six, I believe is what I counted before, different snowflakes in this pattern. One more bolt, and then we'll start with the stitch happens. Hard to believe we only have two more videos after this and then the assembly and then we'll be done. Then we're gonna take a break real quick and 
I'm going to quilt it for you and before we start the um, ruler work quilting videos. So this is a blue gray background with a darker blue deers and there's a few different deers as far as what they're doing. We've got jumping deers, we got deers that are face on, we got deers that are on the side, side views. And this is not just Christmas. You could do, if you were doing a, a man's quilt or a gentleman's quilt that's a hunter, that would be a good one for the back or for piecing it, maybe in the border. Okay, Stitch Happens Part J is where we're at. Part J is right here. So you're gonna need an orange, a red, in two different yellow fabrics and again we only have two more videos after this one and then we're going to do the assembly process to assemble the whole thing and finally take a little bit of time off so that i can actually do the ruler work and quilt it and then i will be doing videos again all right whoops don't want to drop everything i've started sewing a little bit of this just to save some time let's see let's do this so we've got the orange strip on top you've got these three rectangular yellow strips on the side you've got two brighter or medium yellows and one light yellow and then this is just a checkerboard of the yellows and the reds i've already put these two rows together as far as just sewn them together and i've sewed these rectangles so i'm going to start here with chain piecing these two sets of four then we're going to sew all of these together. We're going to make sure we have our seams lined up. So what I did to iron these seams is we're iron t ironing towards the red in every case. Here is the only difference where I had to iron it towards the lighter yellow just so that all of these seams will nest correctly. All right, so I'm just going to start with the last set of patches. So, I haven't come up with a name for the kitten yet. Some people have been throwing out names. Keep in mind, I am only fostering her. Um, she's doing really, really well, especially with the eating, and she's getting a lot more active every, every day. It's pretty amazing to watch. She actually started purring this morning while she was feeding. But it's like trying to hit a moving target because she's moving around so much now. Even when she's got the bottle or the, the nipple in her mouth, her feet are just going constantly. So she's like a fake freight train going around the blanket. It's actually quite funny to watch. I weighed her yesterday. with I have a little scale that, has, um, that I use for postage. And she weighs five ounces. Now, I had to learn a lot when it comes to kittens because I am not a cat person. I have dogs. I don't have any cats. Never had cats. I had cats as a child, but not in my, not as an adult at all. And what, between the vet and um, what I've read, she has to be drinking or eating uh, eight milliliters per ounce that she weighs. So at five ounces, she should be uh, drinking at least 40 ounces of formula. And I think she's pretty close to that for the most part. Um, she's been getting, since I got the right nipples, anywhere from 30 to 40 ounces a day. Sorry about not doing the petite, the fabric video last night, but she was really, really fussy yesterday. And um, I just thought it was better to take her home and feed her and get her settled and comfy. All right. Okay. So I've sewn these two sets together. Now I'm going to sew these two sets together. 
Now, even when I'm sewing these sets, I know they're not aligning because they're going to be a horizontal. I still make sure I nest those seams together because that'll make sure that everything is nice and straight when you go to sew the two sets together. And that'll make sure that you're nice and even when you are going to put the columns or the rows together. So, I know you're probably already tired of hearing about the kitten, but it was... I don't want to say a miracle, but I was very lucky, and she was very lucky that I found her when she did. She was literally in the middle of a very busy road, and the only reason I saw her is because she was on the yellow um, stripes, and she's a little bit dark, so when she was moving uh, against the yellow, that's what made it easy for me to, to, to see her. But hopefully you're not getting too tired of listening to me talk about it because she is really cute. So now I'm going to just sew these together. We are going to nest these seams just like we have been doing. It's very, very simple. As long as you've ironed them the way I said, the seams will nest perfectly. And as I've said it, I've said it many, many times, but just in case you didn't get it, we're going to go over it again nesting and I is just just that so we've got the bottom seam going that way and we've got the top seam going this way when you put them together it will nest they will butt up against each other and it will be nice and flat if it's not flat and it's bulky that means you don't have them aligned or nesting correctly I don't normally pin a lot but with this many seams I highly recommend it. It will just make sure you stay on track. We're not doing half square triangles or anything crazy this week. So really all you need is just your machine and some pins. You don't need your ruler or marking pen. Okay, now with this seam here, this is what it's going to look like. We want this seam to go down only so that it nests with this one. And as always, I highly recommend Best Press, especially with all these little pieces. Um, it really is going to make sure that nothing moves good morning bonnie how are you i'm doing something a little bit different today and we've switched the camera around i think it's easier for me to see the comments and how are you this bright morning bonnie we've been getting we're in the rainy season so we've been getting an awful lot of rain yesterday it rained so hard in the afternoon that um and it was thundering so much we actually lost power and the lights flickered and it was very loud. But the kitten can't really hear too much, which is a godsend because I really thought that would definitely wake her up and possibly scare her. Good, I'm glad. So now all I'm doing is nesting and pinning our last set of blocks, our last row. What else do we have out there? Anybody? Good morning, Susan. And how are you today?
Now the top row, where are we? Actually, yeah. The top row we're ironing down so that the seam is pointed down. And the bottom one we're ironing up. Oh good, I'm glad, Susan. So, let's see, hopefully you can see this good. Okay, we've got all of our little squares together. Now we're gonna iron the rectangles to the small squares. And the final thing is we're gonna iron this orange all the way across the top. I think this way with the camera is a little bit better than the way I have been doing it. Because I can actually see what you're seeing. There's been a few videos where my head wasn't all in the picture or it just wasn't good. At least this way I can see what's going on and see pretty much what you see. Now again, I'm going to nest these seams. If you've ironed them the way I told you to, they should, be, uh, they should nest not uh, without an issue. tell you between all the fireworks that we had last week and the storms that we've been having and they've been pretty bad as far not long but um, very very intense oh thank you Susan it is all a learning curve and this quilt pattern for sure is a great one to learn from because you're doing a lot of repetitive stitching, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The more you do something, the easier it is for you to learn and get in your head. And yes, Susan, being in front of the camera takes a lot of getting used to. These videos are not like my normal videos, which are no big deal. <laughs> These are going to be on YouTube forever. I would hope at least forever. So I want to make sure that they're good. Um, I get frustrated with myself because of that learning curve and I'm not learning it as fast as I would like to. But what are you going to do? There's not much you can do about it. Okay. So, remember I told you that in the beginning, if your seams aren't really, really accurate, you may have these pieces a little bit bigger or smaller accordingly. Well, I actually cut this one just a little bit bigger um, because I wasn't sure with all of these piecing, sometimes directions are not the best, um, even though have, they have people that review them, and sometimes they're just not as accurate as I would like. So I am actually, and yes, this is not the quilt the professional way to do this, but I am actually going to give myself just a little bit of extra room on top and a little bit of extra room on the bottom. And then when I'm done sewing this, I will iron it 
like you would normally do. And then I would use the edge of the, the block and the seams with the ruler. So putting the, a line on the ruler on my seams to make sure everything is nice and straight, trim up the front and the back. Now, like I said, that's not, um, how do I want to say it? That's not the official way to piece, okay? I can't say that enough. Normally, you cut it the size that you need it and you sew it together. But in my experience, especially teaching beginners, giving them an exact measurement to cut doesn't always work out well. And I, um, you end up having either not enough fabric or they end up having too much anyway. So why set people up for failure? I say cut it long, trim it later. It's not a showpiece. This is something that you're making to learn, something that you want to hang up in your room or make a quilt or make it, uh, you know, a cover for your sewing machine. So who cares? It doesn't really matter. Exactly, Susan. It's very frustrating when it's too short and you have to rip it out. So I would much rather have it long and cut it afterwards than to have to do all that ripping. Because like I've always said, I don't like Jack the Ripper. He's a pain. And I would much rather spend my time sewing than ripping. That's something I have to learn too, Susan. When doing these videos, is to repeat especially when it goes on YouTube because not everybody on when it goes on YouTube cannot see what the questions or the comments are that I'm answering so I have to learn and remember to state what the question or comment is so that people in YouTube can follow along too okay um small ruler and my rotary cutter okay so this is what I wanted to show you what I would do for trimming this block up See if I can find the line. I'm doing this upside down, so hopefully you can see what I mean. Okay. I'm using one of the lines on the ruler on the seam, so I know that I'm straight. Then putting the edge of the ruler right up against the edge of the block at the same time, and that's when I'm going to trim this little bit extra up. Now, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be good enough. And for me, done is better than perfect. There we go. Nobody would know that this was long when you started. As long as you cut it and trim it correctly, it's gonna be perfect. As perfect as you can get. All right, that's all I have for you today. Unless you have something else that you need for me or a comment. We've only got the spool and I believe that part left yep that corner right there this part and this part 
So you can't sew the part that we just made to these parts yet until we get everything aligned up. But we'll do that in a couple of weeks and we'll sew it all together. Again, all we have is the spool and that one part and then we're gonna do the assembly. Woohoo! Almost done. Then I get to have the fun stuff, which is ruler work. Um, I said I was going to use all of the sample rulers, which I probably am, but I'm not going to limit myself. If I see something, because this is going to be hanging up in my class that I really like and I want to try out, like uh, the hearts or the spin, spin effects 14 set that I just got in, then I might try to use them. But I will use mostly the sample set. So if you have the sample set, this, the next set of classes is going to be wonderful for you. If you don't have the sample set, now is the time to do it. Thanks, Bonnie. It is a cute quilt. It's going to be really, really cute when we're done quilting. And it's the perfect size for you to learn um, ruler work on. It really is. You can't, it's not too big. It'll fit in most of your machines very easily. And you can have a lot of fun because with the ruler work, we can treat each section slightly different. So it's gonna be good. I can't wait. It's gonna be so much fun. All right, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day. That's all for me today. And if you're around, come on and stop by and see me. See all the neat stuff we got in. And that's it. If, um, oh, one more thing. If I do get the suspension sets in today, um, I'm expecting two more. Then I will try and do a video tomorrow um, and set my machine up so that you can see how well it goes with a bigger quilt. I might use it with this quilt. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll take this one down and sandwich it and play with it a little bit so you can see that tomorrow. That's all. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.